Welcome back, everyone. We're continuing to learn about Quarto, and now we're on to part three of our basics tour. And we're going to be looking at tables. As always, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to help keep things going. So let's take a look at the top. Quarto, Markdown Basics Part 3. We've seen that before. This is just the title block up at the top, sort of a header. Uh, one thing that I have here that's a little bit different is a command tbl-cap-location colon space top. So this is a command you can add when you want captions for your tables to appear at the top above the table. And we can locate that command in this header to make it apply globally to all of our tables in this document. So uh, for this lesson, we're looking at how to change the header of your whole document to include some commands that are applied universally throughout. So uh, first things first, if you're following along, just add that to the top. And then below, we'll see some headers and text that's all familiar at this point. Uh, so our header is tables, and then the first one we're looking at is a basic table. Here we have some text talking about what's happening, but the code for the table is sort of a drawing in a way, almost drawing it with, with text. So we're using a few different symbols here. One is this vertical bar or pipe, and then across sideways here, horizontally, we have dashes. So in some way, this should look like a table. You don't necessarily need all of these spaces, but it does make it look nice and neat when you, when you use them. So here we have a table with two columns, A and B, and then we have content in rows one, two, and three. So um, that's really it. Just notice that there are bars on the sides and in the middle to designate the two columns. And then the rows don't need anything between them other than this uh, row of dashes to indicate the, the difference between the header row and the content rows. Below that, we can look at content alignment. So you may want to have left aligned or right aligned content, uh, depending on what you have in there. So it could be text or numbers, dollar figures, things like that. So the way that you can do that is to use the colon symbol in your row of dashes. And if you put it on the far left, you have a left aligned column. If you put it on the far right, you have a right aligned column. If you put it on both sides, it's center aligned. So uh, here I have some text just talking about how that works, but the actual table itself, uh, you can look to that second row where it has the colons and the dashes in it, and you can see how they're either on the left, right, or on both sides. And that gives you the different alignment of content in that column. Now, as far as captions go, Tables often are accompanied by captions. They're really helpful. They tell you what is in the table, why the table's useful perhaps. So um, what you can do to make that appear is to simply put um, a colon and then some text with a little bit of a command um, in there. So we're looking at two things here actually at the same time. So we're looking at the column widths and we're seeing the appearance of a caption for the first time. And I mentioned it before right at the top of this video, uh, but what you can do is sort of hard code the caption placement in the header, and then it just always appears that way. So with that said, we have that done already. And so at the bottom below this table, we have a colon and then some text. This one just says alignment table, but you could make it say whatever caption you want. And then beyond that, we're specifying the width of each column. So it's not just automatically set up. We're telling uh, the system that we want these columns to be 20% of the width, 30% of the width, and 50% of the width. So uh, let's take a look at our table again really quickly. We have a header row, which I have conveniently labeled with the percentages that I'm trying to create uh, for the widths. We have center alignment on each of them. And then we have content A, B, C, one, two, three. So that's all pretty standard stuff. So this is a three column table, center aligned. And then we want the columns to take on these variable widths. So again, instead of leaving it to the system, we are specifying that we want 20, 30, and 50 um, as the values in here. So we can just simply specify that here and 
I don't even think we need all of that. So we'll just put it in here like column widths in this little array. And then we can run that and see what the whole thing looks like. So here's our rendered page. And we have the title, headers, as we expect. And then at the very top, we see a nicely formatted clean table. It's left aligned. It's a full width. There's a lot of empty space here, but it looks decent. If we go down to the column alignment um, example, we, we can see some left aligned content, some right aligned content, and some center aligned content. And you'll notice because the left and the right are moving away from each other, there's sort of a large gap in between. Now, as far as captions go, we can look at that. We can look at precise width. So here in our final example, we see center aligned content, but each section of the table is taking up a slightly different percentage of the width, with the center 50% column being the largest. We also see a nice uh, formatted uh, caption directly above the table. It says alignment table like we specified. And overall, it looks generally really nice. And so this would work well if you have some tabular data to put into your website or your report. There are more advanced options for tables, uh, which we're not covering here. But for the simple tables, this should be sufficient to get you started. And uh, stay tuned to the channel for more information about Quarto. Thank you.